What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ace Macy, the Divine One. Today, tonight, we are back in Ace's Temple, and we are talking about Star Wars. Okay, I've been gone for a little bit. In my last vid, we was doing the Pan DDD code, and I said the next video, the next DDD code, would be about either Apollo or Dionysus. Well, like I said, even in that video, I was like, when I do DD studies, the DDD codes, I invoke the energy and Usually there's a gap of between my videos when that happens because it's it's a lot of energy. You feel me? A lot of magic going on. And in this gap, what happened on what happened was a lot of different spirits came, started coming through. A lot of new spirits started coming through. And one thing about me is I work with all types of spirits. I'm not dealing with just one pantheon. So one of my uh, what I do with uh, Keely, I'll say is the daemons the infernals the goetia okay and who started coming through recently was uh Bilal, okay and i believe balao has been putting me on game about some things he's been teaching me um if you don't know about Bilal, he's a he is the one with no master okay he's all about self-sufficiency all right he is the left hand path all right um if you want to tap in with him do some more research in this video, you'll definitely be getting a sense of his energy, um, but definitely do more research. You feel called out to him, this video probably let you know how you feel. Because understand what we're rolling with is the Sith. You think we're coming with some Jedi shit, some, some light side shit. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're coming on some Sith shit, but when I was watching this video, because he had put me on this, like this video just came up on my feed a couple of days ago, and I, uh, the way spirits can talk to you is through these videos, they'll just, they'll just send you shit. Um, especially through the conversations you have with them, like this definitely was in line with our conversation, okay? And I'll probably expand more as we go through these videos, because some of the things they, touch on it's like some little key quotes because see me i'm not a star wars star oh my gosh star wars dude star wars kid I, I grew up on doctor who type shit um but star wars george lucas he was definitely cooking his wife his wife was cooking this is this dogon definitely saw some star wars but we're gonna decode it all we're gonna get through all to all through it but what we're dealing with here is the the essence, the force, the light side, and the dark side, the Jedi, and the Sith. And I like how they have these codes that they live by because that's very Saturnian. It's very philosophical as well. Uh, shout out my nigga Pyme. Pyme be uh, put me on a lot of the different philosophies, seeing different perspectives, um, as well as Zay's on the Saturn aspect. But we're going to get all, uh, into all of it. In this video, this is gonna be a banger. Because this this video we're getting into is a banger. Because what it is is it is the philis the oh my gosh the philosophy of the Sith. Okay, an examination of the dark side. Now understand another thing with the occult. Because what we deal with here is the occult magic, um, demonolatry. What it is is a uh, self development, but on steroids. <laughs> That's what someone called it before. And it just always stuck that I show it's funny because that's really what it is. But it's just really deep facing those darker aspects of yourself. Um, shadow work, quote unquote, but it's more, it's different. Okay, but understand you're dealing with untapped parts of your subconscious, okay? Dealing with untapped parts of your subconscious. That's what the go away show are, these DDs. Uh, that's what they all are because you are all the gods all the goddesses you are all the demons all the angels you you are god in the flesh you are the one so this is just all about a, the darker aspects of self um but is there anything else man no i don't think so but yeah let's get into it man let's get into it I know how to do it, man. We're just going to go through, pause when I see some. But we're going to watch this together. Now, I didn't watch this full thing because, like I was saying, 
on my last DD deco, I said the next video was gonna be on Pan and I mean either Apollo and Dionysus, Apollo or Dionysus. But in this video, I stopped because nigga had brung up Apollo and Dionysus. I just seen the text and I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna save the rest for the vid. So the synchronicity, the channel, we in sync. We on the right path. Let's get into it. The Sith are the main villains of one of the most influential movie franchises, Star Wars. The most iconic member of the Sith Lords is Darth Vader, a tragic character who used to go by the name of Anakin Skywalker. Anakin was a promising Jedi apprentice trained by Obi-Wan Kenobi who fell for the dark side of the Force due to unresolved emotional issues by trauma and the manipulations of Chancellor Palpatine who Boy fell victim. Boy fell victim to his 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 nature. Secretly turned out to be among the most powerful. But what we're de what we're de decoding and seeing here is the power in those emotions, because it's all about the alchemy and transmutation of them. Because what I want you to understand is we're not going full blown self, and there's no reason to go full blown Jedi. But the mix of them, that's the truth. That's the truth. That's what I'm trying to understand. Sith ever existed, Darth Sidious. In many ways, the Sith ideologically oppose the Jedi. The Jedi represents selflessness, tranquility, equality, and seek balance in the Force and peace in the galaxy. That is the right hand path, okay? The right side of the. Well, yeah, the, the right hand path is basically more about the group, uh, selflessness. Um, everyone that's that love and light shit everybody be talking about that's that right hand path now on the left hand path is different now you see how he's holding on his left hand path we'll get into it he'll explain the Sith are selfish passionate and seek dominance by achieving strength and power Star Wars generally portrays now I understand he said the Sith I'm gonna run that back he said yeah run that back real quick and peace in the galaxy the Sith are selfish, passionate, and seek dominance by achieving strength and power. Now, he said they're selfish, they seek strength, power. The truth is, it's all about understanding and mastering self. Self. <laughs> okay. It's about, because that's where your power and strength comes from, is building that. Now, as he just explained it, that is Balao. That is Balao. Okay. Star Wars generally portrays the From what I've picked up in my in my experience, the energy, that's Balao. Jedi as the good ones and the Sith as the evil ones. That's a per he said they portrayed the Jedi as the good ones and the Sith as the bad ones. These are programs, projections. Now understand we are in a realm of duality so this duality you must transcend okay good and evil does not exist all right they're one and the same one that's doing evil could think they're doing good one that's doing good someone could say is doing evil bill gates oprah america any Chinese, any big company. People may think they're doing good. People may think they're doing evil. It's perspective. It's a duality. Transcendent. Just look at it for what it is, okay? You must transcend that shit over here. They stump and they leave your morals out, out there, bro. We outside of time over here, bro. But we find shades of gray in between both extremes. The altru... Shades of gray. Tourism of the Jedi has its downsides. And there's something to be said for the self-centered emotional approach of the Sith. The ideas of the 19th century German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche seem strikingly similar to Sith philosophy. And they are critical of the kind of existence pursued by the Jedi. The latter, Nietzsche would have considered an unnatural, self-denying slave morality. What's the difference between the Sith and the Jedi? 
What resemblances do we find between Sith philosophy and established philosophical ideas? And can we use Sith philosophy in our daily lives? This video explores the philosophy of the Sith. Please note, this essay is an exploration of ideas based on the author's understanding and interpretation. It's not advice. Also, this video contains Star Wars footage and imagery which belong to Lucasfilm and Disney. I don't know right to any of this footage. Alright, I'm just decode. I ain't even make no money off this video. Not the video itself, I should say. But, um, pause because I wanted to touch on, uh, the reason I made, I got the idea for this video, right? It's not just to decode this because when we were synchronistic when this video came up was what I was thinking about, not even searching up on YouTube. What I was thinking about was, and I know this was Bilal talking to me, was there was an occultist on YouTube was a practitioner, all right? His name is Ravana Nunn, Temple of the Black Serpent. And, and like months ago, I was watching this video, it was right? And he was talking about Sith, right? He was talking about applying the Sith philosophy, right? And how the Sith move, he was applying that to working with demons, working the left-hand path, working the tree, working the clip off, working the tunnels. He said, he was saying, apply that. And I was like, in his energy, how he was talking, I was like, that nigga's not playing. He was a real deal. Like, if you go on YouTube and just put in Ravana Nun, uh, Sith, you'll find all the videos. But, Nigga was not playing, and that's what I'm saying. Niggas really do this. Like, there's people that really uh, combine these pop culture things with spirituality and magic, and they call that chaos magic. And that's really the sauce. That's what we do here. So, and because I understand the way spirit talks to you is they talk to you through what you know. So, all right. So if you, since we're coming in this modern era, right, and we have these, um. We have different programs. Our, our brains are built different. So we came up with a different culture than compared to these ancient beings. But these ancient beings are outside of time, right? So they can still talk through uh, these universal symbols, which are everywhere. Okay. So for that's why Bilal, the Infernals, the Cliff Off, all those darker energies can still come through. George Lucas. Uh, Whoever wrote Star Wars, these people want to get there, talk like that. Um, it was able to come through as that philosophy, that perspective in that uh, story. Okay, but let's get into it. Let's get into it. Force is a mysterious energy field created by all life and binds everything in the universe together. We're all connected by the Force, which flows through every living being. The Force is central to the Sith and Jedi's existence, as both factions rely on its power and possibilities through manipulation. And I forgot to say, I'm gonna run this back real quick. I forgot to say, I want you, since I, like I was saying, this is chaos magic, right? So. I want you to apply everything that we're about to watch as it's real, okay? I say the same thing when we watch movies, watch the movie as it's a documentary, and it will make sense. It, you just, just, just watch, we'll see. But apply this philosophy and see how it can work for you. The Force is a mysterious energy field created by all life and binds everything in the universe together. We're all connected by the Force, which flows through every living being. The f so he said the Force flows through every living being. Now this is the breath of life, spirit. Uh, somebody named Prana. Uh, energy. Pure light energy. Um, but I like how it's showing the human connected to the animal, connected to the tree, connected to the bird, because I want you to understand as a human, you are the makeup of all things in the universe. Literally everything on earth is into you. All these animals are the 12 zodiacs, the animalistic nature, that lower nature, that beast within you. 
that is you okay those lower three chakras that is you all these animals are symbols of that okay you are the tree the tree of life is also there's diagrams where it shows how it corresponds to the body now i haven't got to that deep level on the cabal side of the cabalic study but i have seen it but and it's definitely there but the cabalic is deep it just correspondences on correspondences it's literally this made sense force is central to the sith and jedi do your research man i'm just pushing on open y'all up to new things if people know already then you know but i want to open y'all up to new things so definitely go research the things i'm talking about this ain't the end all be all all right existence as both factions rely on its power and possibilities through manipulation an all surrounding energy field connecting all life resembles the stoic concept of pneuma also called the breath of life which binds the cosmos together and provides stability and cohesion an explanation of the force and how the sith use it is necessary for understanding their philosophy after all the force is vital to the sith's existence as with the Taoist concept of yin and yang, many force users distinguish the light and the dark side of the force. The light side of the force is generally used for defensive purposes and healing. The Jedi Order devoted itself to the light side of the force, using it for selfless reasons such as protecting other people, justice and restoring and maintaining peace in the galaxy. The Jedi sought to maintain balance in the force, which means harmony between all life forms. They consider themselves guardians of what's good. Among the Jedi are Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Master Yoda. The Sith, however, devote themselves to the dark side of the force. So, the Jedi are your love and light. So when you see most people in the spiritual community, they are your, your Jedi. Because most people are dealing with healing okay but then you when you get on tiktok witch talk you're seeing these sith all right these mages these magicians but there's nothing wrong there's nothing wrong with the uh the healers because the healers definitely i'm talking about like the reiki healers the sound healers like me myself i'm a sound healer but understand we're dealing with the same dealing with the same thing even like how you said we're dealing with the same energy that same what they call it numa we're just gonna call it the same energy, that same breath of life. Um, and it's all about how you use it. Okay, so I want y'all to understand that. The same energy is just about how you use it. You can use it to heal. You can use it to manifest. You can do use it to do whatever you please. But just know what we are here to do on Earth is manipulate energy, period, period. You're here to manipulate energy, period. Because you manipulate energy, creating something anew. Uh, the healers, they have to manipulate energy, moving it out the body, working with tools, manipulating energy. M remove the negative connotation of off of the word manipulation. Okay. Force, which relies on anger, fear, lust to the dark side of the force which he's touching on some key that's what i'm the Sith, however devote themselves to the dark side of the force which relies on anger fear lust greed and aggression aim to destroy one's enemies and cause pain and suffering one uses the dark now i want y'all to understand what what i took away from this when i was hearing this was that the dark side is about using your emotions all right it's about taking and using the power of your emotions that and your ego not letting your ego use you all right and that alchemy is very powerful because then everything starts to work in your favor uh but yeah what i picked up from this was that your emotions is using that because a lot of he say great and shouts and he's talking he's listening off sins these are demons okay so it was about absorbing energy, taking on these energies, all right, becoming one with them, one with them, not running 
away from them or letting them run rapid within you is becoming one having a relationship with them okay and that's how you transcend this bitch Workside to develop Get the gnosis strength. the knowledge and power but the suffering one uses the dark side to develop strength and power but the sith's hunger for more is insatiable it's ne now when one goes through the clip off uh these spiritual systems that is what they're doing they're doing it to gain power all right it's oh, like i said it is self-development on steroids <laughs> damn it um It is self-development on steroids because understand through it you're going through a transition mentally, physically, on a DNA level, on a cellular level, on a grand soul soul level. It's, it's a multi-dimensional uh, transformation that's going on uh, because you are gaining apotheosis. You're reaching a state of apotheosis where you become a god in the flesh. Or because see, I already say you are a god, but you already are uh, that deity. You are that god for real. But you forgot. You came. You incarnated. You forgot who you were. So you must regain that knowledge and understand yourself. Tame yourself and become that god. Create your own reality at your own will. Uh, so that is what this work is all about really all the spiritual work you right hand path or left hand path it's just, it just depends on what path you're called to me personally left hand called left hand left hand where we be at never enough hence there was all middle path we, we do a little bit of right hand path things but cause this making this video is right hand path shit but for the most part on the left Waste competition and bloodshed among Shibble, it's never enough. Hence, there was always competition and bloodshed among the Sith, as they will never stop expanding their power. An essential difference between Jedi and Sith regarding the Force is the rule of two. The Jedi see the Force as spreading fire. The more Jedi, the stronger their collective Force. As we pass the flame, our light spreads, wrote Luke Skywalker. The dark side of the force works differently, like venom. The more force users the dark side has, the weaker the force per individual becomes. As written in the book of Sith by Darth Sidious, no. Now, what I will say about this rule of two, I feel it pertains to the real world, how it really works. I, what I would say is, had a Jedi shit where I feel like it's that universally for any pantheon depending on well actually when it comes to these infernos you really gotta it really depends there's certain things you see why uh, as I learn more understand why not everything is online but you'll be shocked at how much gnosis and information you can find online I think it's more about when it shows up and it's ready for you like literally videos will appear to you when you're ready this video itself not everyone is going to see this video maybe actually maybe maybe this this shit might blow up but if you're watching this you're meant to see it Balao is calling <laughs> manji um the in, the ancients the goetia is calling watching this probably so if you feel called and it resonates with you, that tap in. That's why I say this rule of two is nah, nah. But I can understand. I understand it in the sense of diluting energy, right? Now, in terms of personal magic, that's when that becomes the case. When let's say you create your own magic, right? Because this is that is the true sauce. When you create your own magical system. 
uh, even teachers will tell you they say create your own correspondence create your own understanding because that's what the real it's all about your understanding yourself because you are the guy it's all about how you see the world right but you would want to create your own rituals now let's say you do now when you give them to everybody right that's when they lose their effect so like you can go you can go on tiktok right now and find a money ritual but will you truly believe will you have will it spark that belief in you truly that it will work or would you be better off making your own ritual where you know for a fact what you're doing is going to work i'm gonna let you know right now regardless it's going to work because of the law of cause and effect it's universal it's universal it's a law of cause and effect for a cause there's an effect regardless of the ritual so you could what i would say do and this is something you could do you can take a ritual and then alter it and make it your own all right that's that's the sauce but definitely uh lucifer the light bringer himself bring light spread the light simple simple so put more people on to the game so more people can remember who they are find out who the gods are remember who you are okay book your dd reading today find out which gods goddesses want to work with you have been working with you've been there all your life or which dd you may be in the flesh okay because everybody's somebody everybody's somebody well, let's get back to the star wars will becomes as written in the book of sith by darth sidious no the force is venom if it is poured into many cups it loses its potency until it becomes so diluted it is merely an irritant yet pour those cups back into a single vessel and you will have the power to stop a cray dragon's heart so what i want y'all to think about this is in tarot they have the cups right and you have all these cups you can fill all these cups um now you have two options you can have all these different cups right that are filled or you can have one big cup and that's your vessel right that's all the energy in one compact part rather than many smaller ones so you can see how much more powerful that is right you can do more with that one opposed to that 10 many small ones so like even myself personally one thing me i'm a i'm a true chaos being i want y'all to understand me right like I, I said in past videos i said with past streams i was like i got like 15 books playing right i don't know which one to start with now i found which one the book of the one but coming soon that's good a goddamn banger all right goddamn banger classic gnosis cult gnosis channels but that is magic so when you pour it all into yourself right so i'm gonna say this with like let's say your magic right do not go try or let me start let me say it like this this is a, this is perfect for uh starting out when you start learning all this knowledge right why try and spread it all around all right see what you can do with it for yourself first and then once you do that then spread all right i made a song right and i was like i had to get right with myself so my niggas ain't gotta wait because how can i take care of everybody else if i ain't take care of myself all right because you starts with you all right understand that that should be a foundational rule you got to take care of yourself so that you can take care of others as well because you got to make sure yourself straight in case cause you can't be codependent all right this you should be self-sufficient because if you're self-sufficient you have freedom that's the key with self-sufficient self-sufficiency you get freedom that's the beauty of it quote below end quote 
Thus, to maximize the power of the force, it should be concentrated among just a few, ideally one Sith. However, if there's only one Sith, there's nobody to continue you the Sith lineage. If that. So when I heard that part, I was like, now that in that I can understand why not everyone needs to be doing magic. Not everybody needs to be known about these deeper, uh, darker aspects of the clouds. I can understand that because they don't know how to. Well, let me repeat what he said because. Concentrated among about. just a few, ideally one Sith. Or it should be concentrated among just a few, ideally one Sith. However, if there's only one Sith, there's nobody to continue the Sith lineage if that one perishes. Yeah, I forgot, bro. I'm just gonna repeat. Thus, <laughs> to maximize the power of the Force, it should be concentrated among just a few, ideally one Sith. However, if there's only one Sith, there's nobody to continue the Sith lineage, if that one perishes. So Sith Lord Darth Bane created the Rule of Two, ordering that there could be only two Sith at a given time, a Master and an Apprentice. Let's see, that's why I said that shit was stupid, because I was like, why not pass it on? But I can understand why not everyone needs to be doing this shit or knowing about it because not everyone is called to and not every like there are certain things I can understand exactly why but you just gotta you just gotta see it for yourself but if you don't resonate it you don't resonate it but if you do tap in learn about yourself tap in but there's really there's nothing to be scared of. that's my thing is that it's not really nothing to be scared of because the only thing to fear is yourself your own fears that's really what it is. So it's that level of growth. Okay. It's just they mask it with all this spooky, spooky. Uh, I forgot the word, but they just make everything seem so dark and shit. And I was like, yeah, niggas might be sad sometimes, but sad isn't is emotions. We experience all range of emotions, whether you're in this shit or not. That's what I'm saying. We take what we desire, because we can. We can, because we have power. We have power, because we are Sith. Like the Jedi, the Sith live oh, by- Oh, run that back, run that back. That's some- Hold on, let me spin, hold on. What Sith we desire. Spin. Sith spin, hold on. We take what we desire, because we can. We can, because we have power. We have power, because we are Sith. Like the Jedi, the Sith live by a mantra that summarizes their core philosophical idea known as the Sith Code. The Sith Code is a negation of the Jedi Code, rejecting peace as an ultimate concern while identifying passion as the only force worth embracing. According That's real. That's real. Quote on below. That, that is real. Passion over peace. Passion over peace any day of the week. Passion over peace. There's only one Sith. There's nobody to continue the Sith lineage if that one perishes. So Sith Lord Darth Bane created the rule of two, ordering that there could be only two Sith at a given time, a master and an apprentice. We take what we desire because we can. We can because we have power. We have power because we are Sith. Now, this is the true words of a magician. This is the true words of a true, true, quote-unquote, black magician. But, like, if you was going to really transcend morals, transcend all this shit, we take what we desire because we can. You can create your reality. You give what you want. You can manifest and have it all because you can. It's that simple. You can. Because you have the power to, you have the will, you have the flame within you to, to do it. Go do it. We have power because we are Sith. We are gods, deities, demons, ancients, beings, spirits. We are the one. We do this shit. This a basic understanding, basic understanding. That's why I was like, these niggas spin. 
Like the Jedi, the Sith live by a mantra that summarizes their core philosophical idea known as the Sith Code. The Sith Code is a negation of the... So when I was saying I was writing this book, and that's how I was like, that's how I know this video was but synchronistic and clarity because it's telling me just little things. I was like, because the book, that's what it's pretty much of. It's like my own code and approach to this cult, the spirituality to life, really. That's what the book is. It's just my perspective on it, how I see it. Um, but it's like a it's like a code, you feel me? Not necessarily a Bible, but it's an alternative. <laughs> it's an alternative. Not necessarily live by, but just some understandings. The Jedi Code, rejecting peace as an ultimate concern while identifying passion as the only force worth embracing. Yes. According to the Sith, freedom is not achieved through calmness and clarity, but by using emotions as a source of strength to achieve victory and dominance. So, in that visualization, you've seen how they just, the emotion just ran rapid. What the truth would be really is using that clarity and that calmness to identify and become one with those emotions, and then getting the power from there, that raw essence and transmuting into an alchemy with that film channeling that whether it be creatively working out um doing something productive doing something like go start a business right everybody missing go start a business go start a business Before we can understand the Sith Code, it's essential to explore the Jedi Code first, as these mantras, so to speak, are related. The Jedi Code goes as follows. There's no emotion, there's peace. There's no ignorance, there's knowledge. There's no passion, there is serenity. There's no chaos, there's harmony. There's no death, there is the Force. Now. Even the Jedi's are spitting. They're they're spitting too. I can't even cap because these are all spiritual truths as well. There is no emotion. There is peace. Emotions are not necessarily. They're real and not real. Okay. So I'm not invalidating your emotions. I want you to understand that. But I want you to understand they are a feeling. All right. So I remember when I was early in my journey. I couldn't understand what people was like when people could be disassociated from their emotions until a certain aspect of my work at one point I had became I had learned how to see the emotions as separate from myself right because through the practice of, of of observing my thoughts what I picked up was <clears throat> that on these thoughts they're attached and they may spawn emotions all right they're like charged his thoughts are energetic form their, en their energy just into form as thoughts all right um and i actually have a video called emotional alchemy with my man's pima tap in with that we just all he was talking about but the emotions are if you can see those as separate you do alchemy because that peace that eternal peace that is what is constant you feel me that peace is always constant it's the soul it's always bliss all right you can tap into that at any time at any time so these emotions see that as a layer on top of that bliss whatever you're feeling right now it's on top of that there is no ignorance there is knowledge it's pretty self-explanatory it's pretty self-explanatory because Ignorance, ignorance is the lack of knowledge, all right? So, and this is really what is right. I just came to what it's really saying is you already know. You already know it's, it's the, answer, the answer is within. You know how spiritual niggas be. There is no passion. There is serenity. Now, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Serenity and passion, one and the same. Because what they're these what these are trying to be are like polarities, but they're really one and the same. That's the, you know, there is no chaos, there is harmony. 
Yes, because when you put chaos, when you order chaos, it becomes harmony. If you have all these piano keys right, but if they wasn't in order of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, with the sharps, and it was A, G, C, D, and it was all out of order, the tones would not be harmonic. It'd be chaos. That's why we have scales, all right? To put make it harmony. Play all the 12 notes. It's chromatic, but it's not necessarily harmonic. Okay. Uh, I only know, I just know that because I am a music producer. Tap in with me, man. Tap in. Sound healing. Sauce. All right, there is no death. There is the force. Because Nicole will tell you, and this is the spiritual truth, death is an illusion. Energy never dies. Okay, so when you die, your phys you may this physical body may shut down, but your spirit, your consciousness will transcend. Your awareness will be out of the body, maybe outside of time. And this is when we get into reincarnation. The reincarnation loops that's a discussion for another day <laughs> let's keep going we already 44 minutes in I know that don't say, that says 6 minutes alright I know I'm going to have to cut a little bit but like I said we're going to be here for a minute but love it if you stick through, through this whole video you're a legend you're a legend shout out to you appreciate you like the video Add this to your watch later because you might have to come back. I understand this is a lie, but you might listen like a podcast type shit. But let's keep going. I got all night. We can interpret the Jedi Code in different ways. Firstly, the there is no parts of the first four lines of the code might point to what the Jedi oppose and should be absent. In a Jedi's life, there's no emotion, there's peace, there's no ignorance. There's knowledge. But we could also read these lines as a reality of nature. When there is no passion, there's serenity. When there's no chaos, there's harmony. And thus, it reads as a series of hypotheses followed by conclusions, which show that the absence of phenomena like emotions and passions leads to preferable states. These interpretations find support in Yoda's famous line, and I quote, but beware of the dark side, anger, fear, aggression. The dark side of the force are they, easily they flow. Emotions, these are all just emotions. And they're just talking about dark emotions. They ain't even talking about the light emotions, right? Because there's power in those as well. Because if you have the power to at will command joy, command happiness, that's power, that's power. That's power. Even if, even to do that at will with anger, fear, and aggression, or when you naturally feel them, you know how to transmute them. All right. Alchemy. That's legit alchemy. Get a book called uh, "The Fusion of the Five Elements" by Montauk. I think it's by Montauk Chia. It's literally the book. Transmutation, trans, the alchemy of those emotions. It's literally the book. The science. Taoism. End quote. Furthermore, Yoda's words imply that a Jedi. That's what I'm saying. This is actually an actual science. This is real shit. They put it in the films. They just don't tell you exactly what it is, but if you dig deeper, you'll find it. Now, that's what I'm saying. You get into these sciences, sauce, bro. Just endless amounts of sauce, bro. I should actively avoid emotions and passions as they lead to the dark side of the Force and that one quickly falls into the trap of being carried away by them. The last line of the Jedi Code reads as a metaphysical truth. There's no such thing as death, as in a permanent ending of life. When we die, we simply transform into another manifestation of the Force. Some Jedi even learn techniques to keep lingering in the physical world after they died, as Force Ghosts. Now that is the purpose of spiritual work. In the sense of when people do like, talk about astral projection, when they want to learn how to astral project, lucid dream, that is what they're really doing. That's what you're really preparing for because when you go to sleep, sleep, and sleep is the cousin of death. 
If you're not having dreams when you die, you're not gonna see nothing. That's when that's when motherfuckers be coming back. But if you have that ability to uh, take over your awareness, like how I'm talking to you right now, this awareness, if I can take that over to the dream state with that lucidity, power, you can literally change the fabric of your reality. As well as when you go over to the other side, you can do all these different things, go over all these different places, same way you could can when you're asleep. And that's just the astral projection, the uh, lucid dreaming. But the essence of that is taking your awareness, your consciousness over to the other state. All right. But just practice that. You can get the book uh, Astro Dynamics by Robert Bruce. So there's no need to fear death. It's just a return to the force. Return to the one. Return to, return to source. Okay. That's returning to the all. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Turn to well, every not every necessary everything all at once, but return to everything. And you will be everything. Everything in existence. The one. The Sith Code seems to be a variant of the Jedi Code, rejecting peace, making the very things the Jedi avoid their goal. The Sith Code goes as follows. Peace is a lie, there's only passion. Through passion, I gain strength. Through strength, I gain power. Through power, I gain victory. Through victory, my chains are broken. The Force shall free me. Peace is a lie. There is only passion. I don't remember seeing this on my first my first listen through, first view. So I'm meditating on this real quick. Peace is a lie. There is only passion. Through passion, I gain strength. That's true. That works with the fire element. That that is all energetically sound. Yes. Through strength, I gain power. Yes. Hundred percent. You're working out. Do. The more reps you do when you get to them harder reps, the more you can do, that's that's when you actually build the muscle. That's when you gain the power. Through that power, you gain victory. Yes, because when you have more power, you can do more. Yes, okay, I gain victory. Through victory, my chains are broken. Yes, when you succeed, yes, because you are achieving new heights. Yes, okay, of course, of course. The force shall free me. The force is the power. That force... The understanding of your spiritual abilities, your spiritual self, your deity, your God self. So the only part I'm really throwing off on here is that peace is the lie. There is only passion. I think, okay, okay, because I, now I see it in the context of how they, the Sith, are looking at it. Because they see peace as you being uh just letting some shit happen all right you're just being non-confrontational at all you're just letting shit flow but if you with that passion the shit you care about with that energy that motivation that inner motivation that's what's going to get you to move you feel me unlike the jedi the sith embraces passion using it as a vessel to develop strength power victory and ultimately experience freedom they use the force to empower themselves and achieve their goals. What characterizes the Sith Code is the belief that triumph leads to freedom. There are different definitions of freedom. In the Jedi sense, freedom is inherent to their code. It's the absence of disturbing emotions, chaos, and the fear of death. Through peace. That's real. That's see now. That's true. That's true transcendence. I want you to understand that. That right there is true transcendence and on my one of my last room trips that was one of the things that came through i was like the man it was something I was like but if you can not i was like true wealth is like not is being able to withstand all this fucking chaos and still be blissful still be at peace that is true wealth all right all those negative emotions all the fear of death when you transcend that that's power that is true transcendence you feel me peace knowledge serenity and harmony the jedi experience freedom 
Such freedom may not equal freedom within a material world, but it's rather emotional freedom, freedom of the mind, an ideal we find in several philosophies. Their code, it's the absence of disturbing emotions, chaos, and the fear of death. Through peace, knowledge, serenity, and harmony, the Jedi experience freedom. Such freedom may not equal freedom within a material world, but it's rather emotional freedom, freedom of the mind, an ideal we find in several philosophical schools and religious traditions. The Sith don't buy this. They aren't interested in freedom of mind. Hence, peace is a lie, they say. Peace. Now, what I'm telling you is that that freedom of mind, how that the Jedi perspective, you take both. You always take both. Don't take, choose just one side. All right, because there's energy on both sides that can you can use for your own alchemy. Feel me? So, always take both. You can achieve that emotional, that mental freedom, as well as the physical as well. Gets you nowhere in life. That's the from birth to death. That's the practice. This is only nine minutes in. That's crazy. There's conflict. Even the Jedi, despite their teachings, experience a fair share of conflict, although they engage in it for the sake of maintaining balance and peace, as a protective measure. The Sith propose that passions allow us to deal with conflict in ways that strengthen us. We can use anger to destroy our enemies, and desire as a fuel for achievement and growing stronger. An example is Darth Vader, who channels his fear and grief into anger, making him more powerful. According to the Sith, freedom lies in the material world, but can only be achieved through strife. We must conquer ourselves, our enemies, and destroy everything that stands in our way. We must fight ourselves out of bondage, become our own masters, let no one rule over us, and crush the ones who try. Then we can do as we please, which is true freedom according to the sith bro i'm telling you when it, when i heard this shit this shit was so profound because i was like this literally sound like the go away shit like the inferno like the spirit talking this is that is how they talk nigga. or just like that that right there self-explanatory i ain't even got to say no more but like i was saying at the beginning of the video Paolo and dionysus here we are. So I don't know how the rest of this video gonna go. I could make this a part one. We're almost at a bit, at a hour. <sighs> Should I? If I will, I'll cut it right here and um add a little end clip. If not, I'll probably just keep going. What time is it, bro? Is it? It's eleven. We already have 55 minutes. Hey, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going, though. But, Apollo and Dionysus. Let's see what else the ancients have in store for us. I don't know what the rest of this video is looking like, but let's tap in and learn together. I will be the code as well. Let's go to Solicitor. Remember why the Sith are more powerful than the Jedi, Sidious because we are not afraid to feel. So that's profound in recent uh, synchronicities with me because when Bilal started coming through, what I've noticed this time around, because this came through before, but this time around what I've noticed was I feel more like my energetic body, like my subtle bodies. I'm picking up on a lot more shit. Um, like now I can say, before, I could say I could probably be an empath. That's what I used to say, probably. But now, for sure, empath. Like, now, like, I really feel like, yeah, empath level. Um, it's like a really feel the energies. And it's really a matter of are you afraid, afraid to feel? Like, I really, like, at a true level, it really is a matter of do you want to feel? Okay because you can your mind can completely disassociate like i was saying people can disassociate from feelings in that that means you can be completely unaware of a feeling you could be feeling something not even though that's what that emotion is you could be feeling anxiety 
and not even knowing that's what anxiety is. You feel me? That that was me. You feel me? But it's all types of emotions. But once you become aware of them, and like really sit with the emotion, become aware of them, figure out the cause. It's like okay, can work on transmuting. Where the it's power. Jedi pursue peace, harmony, reason, and selflessness. The Sith flourish in chaos, wildness, impulse, and self-indulgence. Interestingly enough, the conflict between the Jedi and Sith resembles the duality between Apollo and Dionysus. Now what's funny here, <laughs> now like I was saying in my videos, I was like, when I did my own DD, said my own DDD code, one of my archetypes that came out was that of Apollo, like, because I am a musician, a music producer, but I do, I do it all. I write poetry, art, and I do it all. But there's also an aspect of me that has this Dionysus indulgence, you feel me? Uh, where's the grapes? Where's the grapes? I gotta, I gotta get, get, get the grapes from this, this one. This one. Oh, because when Dionysus come through, I understand Dionysus, that's Prince, so. Praise be. But always uh, that indulgence, that's definitely that's definitely hundred percent. But this is this is spot on with the spirits. Because even when you get into like uh offerings, right? The offerings will be the shit that you would indulge in, like whiskey. You feel me? Right here I got the fireball right now for the uh for Bilal. In Greek Praise mythology. Me. In his first book, The Birth of Tragedy, Nietzsche wrote about the birth and death of Dionysus as well, for you want to type in Dionysus. Um, that's why I put out the grapes, the grapes, Dionysus' energy, as well as uh, get you some wine, some red wine. Greek tragedy. He believed that Greek tragedy was the un- Red wine for Belial as well. Red wine for Belial as well. But let's get into this video, man. Cause so I know some of y'all probably focus on the Star Wars. Some are actually listening to me. The chaos beings here in both. Jedi and Sith resembles the duality between. We'll start this whole section over. Be, to be fair. Sidious. Because we are not afraid to feel. Where the Jedi pursue peace, harmony, reason, and selflessness, the Sith flourish in chaos, wildness, impulse, and self indulgence. Interestingly enough, the conflict between the Jedi and Sith resembles the duality between Apollo and Dionysus in Greek mythology. In his first book, The Birth of Tragedy, Nietzsche wrote about the birth and death of Greek tragedy. He believed that Greek tragedy was the unprecedented fusion between the Dionysian and Apollonian forces, which led to the fullness of the human experience in art. In his later works, however, Nietzsche embraced the life-affirming impulses of Dionysus, as he stated in his autobiography, Ecce Homo. I am a disciple of the philosopher Dionysus. I would rather be a setter than a saint. <sighs> Real. Quote. Real. But what do the Apollonian and Dionysian stand for? And how do these forces relate to the Jedi and Sith? In Greek mythology, Apollo and Dionysus... Right, now this is becoming a real study now. This is getting real shit because there's not been happening with Bilal, but I've noticed a lot of Greek entities have came in as well. That's another thing I've tapped, I realized with Bilal. Even shit, the last video, the deity study was Pan. So we're all still in energy. Um, but yeah, this is just, this is just mass synchronistic. Like I said, I haven't watched this part of the video, but now we're in like a real live reaction. So, but, um, Let's cook and learn. This are both sons of Zeus, but seem to oppose each other by nature. Apollo is the rational one that pursued order and purity, but also beauty, moderation, and reason. He is the god of oracles, healing, arts, sunlight, knowledge, shepherds, and a protector from evil, duties and characteristics resembling the Jedi order. In terms of ancient Greek philosophy, we could say that the Stoic school of thought is based on the Apollonian. Stoicism revolves around living a life based on reason and perfecting re Profound, the spirit put in me on Stoicism this morning. That's profound. But the way 
of like all that Apollon that uh, Apollonia how Apollo acts that's literally my that's literally my archetype like can't get like I can't even make that shit up like that shit that shit really crazy it, it blows me away every time reason its goal is to reach a state of flourishing named eudaimonia which requires cool headedness the absence of passions and living in harmony with nature so stoicism and the jedi share many similarities as with the stoics peace serenity and harmony are among jedi values even though the meaning of these values slightly differs nevertheless like the stoics the jedi follow apollonian principles they're rational logical and based on the mind in the phantom menace qui-gon jinn tells his padawan obi-wan don't center on your anxieties obi-wan keep your concentration here and now where it belongs end quote key 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 sauce be in the moment one of my biggest lessons learn to be in the moment be patient just be now like how i was talking about how to, my anxiety this shit is pro bro, this, secret, this shit is profound jen jen come on bro that's spirit that's spirit this line fits the stoic aim to be present and the goetia are some of the goetia some of the demons are jen paimon jen for those who don't know not be swayed by emotions don't be swayed by the emotions they're not real quote unquote be one tap into that bliss a life without passions seems antithetical to sith philosophy which embraces the passions through which they find strength power and freedom the sith would reject the apollonian principles and welcome the greek god dionysus among their ranks Opposed to the averter of evil, the most beautiful god of all, and ideal to many, stands Dionysus, the god of wine, vegetation, fertility, festivity, ritual madness, religious ecstasy, and theater. Where Apollo is rational, moderate, and serene, Dionysus is insane, indulgent, chaotic, and passionate. The Sith are not interested in peace and view the negation of the passions as life-denying, contradicting the very thing that empowers them. In the Star Wars prequels, we see how Darth Sidious schemes his way into the powerful position of Chancellor to reform the Democratic Galactic Republic into the Galactic Empire and declare himself Emperor. While the Jedi sees such lust for power as an existential threat to the peace in the galaxy, the Sith view it as a road to freedom. Only the powerful are free, as the will of others doesn't chain them. Author of the book Rule of Two, Drew Karpishin, wrote, Evil is a word used by the ignorant and the weak. The dark side is about survival. It's about unleashing your inner power. It glorifies the strength of the individual. Alright, now... What I wanted to touch on was with Dionysus. So, like I was saying, one of my aspects was Apollo, right? That Dionysus is another aspect of the same entity. Let me explain. This is what came to me. They are both sons of Zeus. They're dualistic in nature, and like I said, duality is a is a complex okay because if there's something's du dual to each other that means they're two halves of the same thing so they're like twins kind of all right if they're being they're one being understand right that's why i was like because me right now i'm telling you it's literally a combination of apollo and dionysus that's why when i seen this it was very very profound even as I'm sitting here watching but um evil is a word used by the ignorant and the weak facts because in evil if you're evil if you think something's evil that's you truly ignorant of it you're just you lack the knowledge you just lack knowledge you don't understand it like if you get even if you get mad at something if you're angry or something or a, not not if you're upset but if you're like really angry or something Nine times out of ten, you're really just lacking the knowledge of a certain aspect of it. Most problems stem from ignorance or weakness, whether it's emotional or some type of level. 
that's the true evil the true evil is ignorance and weakness that's the true evil see how evil is a word used by evil it's crazy how that works the dark side is about survival it's about unleashing your inner power it glorifies the strength of the individual I don't, I don't know how I feel about that one because survival I don't know about that one chief survival not necessarily I don't say it's necessarily about survival I don't, I don't know about that one chief end quote this is my the personal Dionysian is know. the affirmation of life it's embracing everything life offers including the primal emotions and the wildness of being curbing one now that's very real this is sound like Azazel now this sound like Azazel but this is definitely I can see the philosophy of a lot of the uh, infernos a lot of the Goetia because understand a lot of them are fallen angels right and like in their mythology which you, you read you'll see they fell and they fell in love with the women of earth right so they they fell in love with life itself like this physical existence because understand the glacier the demons themselves they can show up in the physical world but how they show up is sublimity they show up invisibly what that means is they may not have a physical vessel like me and yourself not with their full consciousness at least but what they do what they like is like I said with the offerings they like to indulge so when I take a sip of this fireball this whiskey that taste that sense is going to Bilal because they all reside within you okay so that goes like all the ancestors are in you so if you were going to make them a meal eat the meal as you are the ancestors this is so this is real sauce I'm putting you on now this is real sauce when I'm out. What uh, offers, including the primal emotions and but it's all about live. If you if while we're here living on Earth, right, you don't have to struggle. Why not live life to the fullest? Why not? See what I'm saying? That's all it's about. You hear the manipulate energy, create the life you desire. She ain't got to be hard. You ain't gotta be in the matrix you stuck in. You can change your shit up. The wildness of being, curbing one's emotions for peace, is a denial of life. Instead, the Sith pursue conflict as it forces them to better themselves. According to Sith Master. That's true. See, that's a level of that's a level of alchemy though. That is a real deep level of alchemy. To jump at conflict, knowing it's gonna make you greater strength that's power to Uthar win conflict forces change growth adaption evolution or death philology death is transformation understand death is not like I said death is a illusion to so understand death is truly transformation just Walter Otto stated that the fullness of life and the violence of death are equally terrible in Dionysus. The Sith seek as much power as possible, but acquire it at the cost of death, including their own. They always put their lives on the line in their quest for dominance. It's all or nothing. It's either the absolute top or annihilation. Such I, I, I understand it. I feel it. Extreme lust for power is madness from the Apollonian perspective, but the raison d'être of the Sith. It's a life of maximizing experiences and possibilities, passion, self-development, self-realization, and the strengthening of the individual. It's not about acceptance of the world, but changing it to your liking and reforming and destroying what's in your way. It's not about summoning help from the force, but taking control of it. True power can come only to those who embrace the transformation. This is a commercial ad for the Kalipov, for the Goetia, for the Inferno. Gotta be, bro. This is literally, this is literally it. This is literally Kalipov, Goetia work, dark magic, whatever you want to call it. 
worked our code work. The actual practice, though. Not just reading the books. No, I'm talking about the, the actual practice is this. Jumping at those conflicts. Jumping at that transformation. Jumping into die off. Into death. Into knowledge. Feel me. Darth Reaven. The Sith walk a dangerous path. Rejecting safety and inner peace. Exchanging it for growth and passion. They say yes to the full spectrum of life. They are willing to exchange suffering for life-affirming experiences. Hence, Count Dooku tried persuading Yoda to join the dark side by saying, Tell me what you want and I will sh Before he gets into that, I want to say, he said they're willing to accept suffering for the ex to experience all of life. So that's when people be like, will you suffer now to experience uh, peace and joy, the good shit later, pretty much. And that's pretty much that sense what they're saying. But let me, let me, let me cook. Waiting but Yoda to join the dark side by saying, Tell me what you want, and I will show you how the dark side can help you achieve it. Do you want friends? The dark side can compel them for you. Lovers? The dark side understands passion in a way you never have. Do you want riches? Endless life? Deep wisdom? End quote. This nigga sound like Lucifer, man. This nigga sound like... This nigga sound like... This is some true... This is some true infernal talk right here, man. This is some true de demon talk. Damon talk right here, man. Contrary to the Jedi, but resembling. And you can. You can you can get it all. Tap in, book a consultation with me. If you wanna if you wanna tap in, book a consultation with me. I'll put you on. Link the ideas of Nietzsche. The Sith follow Dionysian principles. They're passionate, chaotic, and based on the body, or more specifically, on the primordial urge, which Nietzsche called the will to power. It's the primordial urge. Okay, all these ancient beings, all these demons, all these ancients, they're all primordial energies. Primordial means before the physical, before, since the beginning, the ancient, the prehistory. Pre they're natural. Feeling over my. So, let's say there's no escaping it. That's why I want you to understand there's no escaping it, so why not understand it, become one with it? They thrive on passions like hate, anger, and fear. Still, the Sith have Apollonian features as well. They possess and create order and structure. We just have to look at the Empire. They protect people, as we see when Darth Sidious saves Anakin on Mustafar. However, the protection of others always stems from selfish reasons. If you don't know how to make cords, this is it. Congratulations. <laughs> the cords are already made for you. We can drag one of these chord progressions in. Okay, for my music niggas, if you're going out like this, I'll not have no respect for you at all. If you're going out like this, I have no respect for you. We make shit from scratch over here. Or if you're going to sample, you better, better make that shit sound different from the sample, G. Equality is a myth to protect the weak. Some of us are strong in the force, others are not. Only a fool believes otherwise. Equality is a myth to protect the weak. <sighs> That's Jack on trigger some folks. Some of us are strong in the force, others are not. That's true. Not everyone has the same amount of energy. Some, like a uh, one thing that I really resonate with and I've seen a lot of truth with is human design human design literally shows you how not everyone is the same but it's such a if you want to get read like a book for real I thought Vedic astrology was reading you like a book which Vedic astrology is the real astrology the real sauce find and decode your uh, Vedic astrology chart you definitely need to do that your Vedic your natal Vedic astrology chart you definitely need to go look at that but as well go look at your human design profound insights profound like I said like this video save it to your playlist watch later you come back it's gonna come back only a fool believes otherwise. 
if everyone is equal that that is that is some dumb shit i can understand that that is that is true because not everyone is built like you not everyone is built like me that's just that just it is what it is not everyone is the great not everyone has not everyone can manifest like any like some people can manifest it's just everyone's different everyone has something special about them everyone is unique everyone has something that makes them them everyone is their own individual that's what's special about them though is that uniqueness that individuality that's the beauty of it that's all I was like equality is nothing you just gotta find what makes you special and work with that makes find what makes you you and work with that a central theme of Nietzsche's philosophy was Herren und Sklaven Moral, in English, master-slave morality. According to Nietzsche, the master morality was the default attitude in ancient Greece and the Roman Empire. It was based on pride, nobility and assertiveness. The slave morality was a response to master morality and became the norm when Christianity became a dominant force. Mm. The masters have been done away with. The morality of the common man has triumphed, said Nietzsche, referring to the triumph of the Judeo-Christian herd over the nobility. Looking at the relationship between the Sith and Jedi, we encounter profound similarities between Nietzsche's master-slave morality and the philosophies of the force using Star Wars factions. The Sith value the virtues of the masters, while the Jedi value the virtues of the slaves. Those with master morality focus on gaining power, creating hierarchy, attaining wealth, following ambitions, and being determined and courageous. The structure of the Galactic Empire is a testament to the hierarchical and authoritarian principles which characterize master morality. The strong must rule, while the weak don't deserve anything but being dictated. Fear is the primary tool for keeping the subjects in line. The strong rule, the weak are meant to serve. This is the way it must be. End quote. So let's think about this mentally. The mentally strong ones. The ones who have the power to cut through the bullshit are the ones who can create their reality. The ones who are weak minded, those are the ones that can be manipulated. Those are the ones that will be serving in this bitch. That's just, that's just how it is. But on the other hand, the Jedi value traits resembling slave morality, like kindness, patience, generosity, altruism, obedience, and humility. For example, in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, we see how Obi-Wan struggles not to sacrifice himself to help others. Self-sacrifice is one of the Jedi's essential virtues. As opposed to the selfish Sith, the Jedi are selfless, they live for the benefit of others. The Jedi disapprove of what drives the Sith, like their lust for power and limitless passion. According to Nietzsche, those with slave morality devalue the master's virtue and create their own virtues that turn what the masters see as weaknesses into strengths. Pride becomes humility, boldness becomes meekness, and vengeance becomes forgiveness. Those with a slave morality tend to view themselves as morally superior, which is also the case with the Jedi. They consider themselves as bearers of light and protectors of the good, opposing the dark and evil Sith. Spiritual niggas. The twist here is that those carrying a slave morality, the herd, believe they have voluntarily adopted values like humility, forgiveness and selflessness. But according to Nietzsche, this isn't the case. The masters have forced these upon them. Impotence gave birth to slave morality. And instead of overcoming their impotence, the herd disguises it as a virtue and demands others to do the same. Nietzsche argued that those with a slave morality seek to assimilate masters into the flock, not transcending their position. But in reality, such an attitude leads to the degeneration of things strong and noble. Unsurprisingly, the Sith deem the Jedi qualities, such as put forward in the Jedi Code, worthless and pathetic. And from a Sith point of view, it makes sense that Darth Sidious called the Jedi view dogmatic and narrow in Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. 
there is more to the force than restraining its power within the bounds of a moral framework, or in Nietzsche's term, keeping the slave morality alive while suppressing master morality. The force grants access to strength, power and victory, goals which the Sith essentially aspire to. The Sith Code offers a way out of slavery, not the mere acceptance of it. Through strength, power and victory, a slave's chains are broken. According to Sith philosophy, he turns into Nietzsche's master, a position of strength from which freedom ensues. But those with slave morality will not attempt to break their chains. They endure them proudly and even tighten them in the name of goodness. God, that was a lot of shit. Um, I'm gonna let them keep cooking, but it's just, but it's a lot, but it's gonna be going a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm learning with y'all. Goodness. Darkness is a friend, an ally. Darkness allows us to understand others, to see what they value when they believe no one else is looking. It allows us to be honest with ourselves, to express those values that we would disavow in the light. All right, now, 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 this is some, uh, no. All right, now, the darkness. Yes, 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 become one with the darkness. All right, Bilal, uh, the dark. I actually waited till it got, because I was going to do this video when I, right when I got off work. But I was like, let me wait till it get a little bit darker. All right, because I know Bilal. And the dark the energy comes through but uh, um but the in the dark you can understand others and see what they value when they believe no one else is looking because the darkness another word for the darkness is uh the subconscious okay so through the work you'll start to pick up on like i was saying i was with myself these emotions these certain feelings I'm able to pick up on more both it within myself or I've been able to pick up like even when I'm out I can pick up other people's emotions that's the empath ability of it and it's like that's the the darkness and you can see it you can see these things in people too all right you can pick up the energy you can see it um but it's just coming trained to the darkness can you see in the dark or can you bring your own light out of the darkness? Okay. And out of your own darkness. All right. Produce your own light. Because you are a star. You produce your own light. Just find that light. Is Sith philosophy valuable for daily life? It depends on what you want to accomplish. If you're an Apollonian type of person who... That's what I was going to say when I paused. I was like, because he was like, he just said, is Sith philosophy ap applicable in daily life? I would say yes. But like I was saying earlier, I was like, I, I was like, you, I was like, I wouldn't recommend going full blown just Sith. All right, how he said, like what I would say the key truly is, is maintaining, oh my God, I can't believe I saw a goddamn Jedi, maintaining the balance. <laughs> But it's that balance between that Sith philosophy and that Jedi philosophy. A combination of them, a combination of them is perfection. Truly. You will truly be one. The one with the combination of you will be on some next level shit. Who values peace and tranquility, then Sith philosophy probably isn't for you. The light path might also be better suited if you seek spiritual enlightenment rather than worldly success. Although my whole thing is why can't you have both? Because the thing is you can have both. Truly, I want you to understand that you can have both. People have gotten both. So in that, that's why I'm saying use both sides. This is when they get into the people left hand path, or right hand path. People would be like they're middle pathers. Some people be saying they're middle pathers. Like me right now, I'm more on the left hand side, but I'd say I'm in between the left and the middle path. Right hand path, uh, I just look at my yeah. But I can see closer, slowly and slowly, the more the angels come through. 
and the more I understand what's really going on, what I'm here to do, I'm like, okay, uh, I see how to work this thing. But you yourself will find your path. All right, whether you resonate with the Jedi or the Sith with the left hand or the right, the Infernos, the Goetia, or um, I don't even know what the polarity to them would be because some angels, not all angels are uh, nice. Okay, we'll just say it like that. Not all angels are nice. Some of them are cool, but not, not all angels like humans okay but angels is some like people like even demonologists tell you they like they you know, people will be scared of demons they be like the angels are the ones y'all got to be like hold up those are the ones you got to be like hold up with but um but this is all about philosophy and your approach to life in a sense this ain't even you ain't even got to tap into spirits necessarily with this but from a foundational essence if you want to tap in with spirits a hey, book consultation tapping will get will tap you in for sure but for a foundational level even if you're not even trying to tap into spirits i'm talking to my beginners and they're not ready for that level yet on a foundational level get your philosophy towards life straight that's all so you need to see what you resonate with because that will give you a direction in your spiritual path okay enlightenment rather than worldly success. Although Sith philosophy as a whole seems suitable for psychopaths and narcissists, it contains elements that could be useful for our daily lives. The path to the dark side could lead to self-preservation, worldly success and protection against those who try to exploit us. It also allows us to question the values intrinsic to Nietzsche's slave morality. An interesting example is how a character named Kriya, a Sith Lord, criticized the virtue of charity. She argued that seeking to aid everyone suffering in the galaxy only weakens yourself and those you aid. I quote, If you care for others, then dispense with pity and sacrifice, and recognize the value in letting them fight their own battles. And when they triumph, they will be even stronger for the victory. I gotta get right with myself so my niggas ain't gotta wait. If you care for others, then dispense with pity and sacrifice and recognize with value and letting them fight their own values. So, yeah, if they can fight their own values, if, it, ooh, if they can fight their own battles, let people fight their own battles because they too will become stronger. Okay? If you're doing all this shit for them, it's making it easy. They're not gonna get that true growth. But if they triumph how you triumphed, or an aspect of it, they get that true victory. You feel me? I just got a Quote. profound, my vocab right there, I got a profound realization right there, but keep that, that was a personal joint. In this perspective, Sith philosophy brings about nuance regarding what's right and wrong by carefully looking at the consequences of our actions. For example, when we give money to a beggar, are we truly helping or keeping him weak? Or when we protect our children, do we do them an actual favor or do we hijack their self-reliance? And do peace and serenity generate happiness or weakness? Another potential benefit of Sith philosophy is that it can lead us to our darker unwanted characteristics which we could use and thus create a more whole rounded personality by developing our dark side instead of repressing it. The brighter the light, the darker the shadow, psychiatrist Carl Jung once stated. The more one tries to be good, the more he suppresses his darker qualities. But as a consequence, we fail to, as Dark Reven put it, express those values that we would disavow in the light. Jung believed that we need to explore the dark side of our psyche, as it contains personality traits and qualities that can enrich us if we integrate them. Disparaged features like pride, selfishness, self-admiration or boldness could be used to improve one's position, exude strength and simply feel good. It could help us discover our inner Dionysian and break free from slave morality. 
eventually developing our dark side. Or, in other words, integrating dark side characteristics may strengthen our position in the material world and lead to worldly success. This is true fucking alchemy, man. This is true alchemy. I like how you said your inner Dionysus. So like I remember how like I was saying, I was like, me myself, I was like, I feel like I got a Dionysus. I expect how to combine up the two entities. But the true, true truth essence is how I said you are all the deities, all the gods and goddesses are in you. So you have an inner Dionysus. You have an Apollonian aspect within you. So, so that's what I'm saying. Everyone has a lower nature, lower animalistic wild chaos being self to them just a matter of will they become one with it will they resonate with it become one with their shadow become one with their darkness okay and that's all the spiritual work this could live off this work with demons work uh spiritual work the shadow work shadow work at the root really is about it's coming one with that darker aspects of yourself coming one and getting the power from it. See how you can use it uh, to your benefit. Using that those traits to your benefit. That what was once your pitfall, once your downfall. Now it's your it raises you. Sith philosophy has pitfalls as well, without a doubt. The Sith show little concern for other people's well-being. They oppose equality and charity and don't believe in goodness. The strong must survive. So the Sith compete against everyone and everything. Some exceptions aside, they either dominate or try to achieve the dominant position. There's no trust among Sith. Any weakness will be exploited. It's a very intense, dangerous path. If one f the, the, That's the danger of what people be saying on these darker with the darker sides of a spirituality which this is that's what they be saying goes on is because that is the shadow aspect to this all right all this they be saying but what was this follows the this way is, this is real i want you to understand this is real of the sith making lots of enemies is certain and trusting relationships are impossible even the bond between a Sith master and apprentice involves endless competition and mistrust. When put in positions of power, the Sith tend to be very destructive towards their environment. Without mercy, they'll destroy their enemies and dispose of people that don't serve them. Also, these positions are incredibly fragile. That's how you must be though. You got it to bro. If niggas ain't serving, if niggas ain't in alignment with where you're going and what you got going on, what you're trying to do, they gotta go they gotta go it's that simple it's that simple they gotta go niggas ain't on the team they not trying to go to the same destination on the boat send that nigga to the ocean history shows that tyrants rarely last when everyone despises you it's just a matter of time before someone takes you down which could be anyone considering you have no one you can trust See mutiny. The constant threat of the Sith apprentice getting more powerful than his master and then destroying him to replace him shows the fickleness of a Sith's position. Their freedom comes with profound bondage, as they must maintain their power at all costs. If they fail, destruction follows. From a stoic point of view, we can conclude that no matter how much power the Sith have in the external world, they are not free. They'll always be subject to fate, which ultimately lies beyond their control. Let oh, me run that back then last. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Bondage, as they must maintain their power at all costs. If him to replace him shows the fickleness of a Sith's position. Their freedom comes with profound bondage, as they must maintain their power at all costs. If they fail, destruction follows. From a stoic point of view, we can conclude that no matter how much power the Sith have in the external world, they are not free. They'll always be subject to fate, which ultimately lies beyond their control. So Sith philosophy could benefit those who desire a life of vigor and intensity, the go-getters who value achievement rather than contentment. 
It's a way to strengthen the individual and increase self-reliance. Paradoxically, the path of the Sith is as empowering as destructive. This duality places them among the ranks of the ancient Greek god Dionysus, whose fullness of life and violence of death are equally terrible. Yeah, this 100% one of the most profound videos on YouTube. And this came out, when this come out? This came out about a year ago. Where Ravana Nun. Greetings, everybody. Bro, Ravana Nun. And then was doing this shit five years ago, bro. Ravana the Nun was talking about this shit five years ago. See what I'm saying? But this is actual science and sauce, you feel me? So I want y'all to understand. Niggas is really out here living like the Sith. You feel me? If you want to become a Sith, be the Sith. Go tap in Ravana Nun. Um, I don't even know if he's still on. I don't even know if he's still on that. He might be doing teaching some other show right now. I have no idea. Um, me myself, I'm building my own practice, but this is definitely some sauce I'm definitely gonna incorporate because me, I'm a big, big on the chaos magic. I like incorporating things from anything that makes sense to me. So this right here was definitely a banger, classic. Praise be below. Praise be all the agents, the infernos. Uh, Goetia, all known and unknown. But thanks for watching, man. If y'all watch all this with me, um, sat through all this, uh, your world, man. I appreciate you. Um, if you want to tap in with the spirits, tap in with the Goetia, tap in with uh, any deities, gods, goddesses, Dionysus, Apollo, uh, book a consultation, book a deity reading, find out which gods, goddesses may be around you, um, as well as those who may want to work with you or which one you may be in the flesh. Um, listen to my beats on my uh, Ace Maceo page. Uh, they're sound tuned, they're all tuned to soft geo frequency, so they work on your chakras uh, when you listen to them. As well as, I got some meditation tracks up there as well. So, power, power definitely tap in with those, do some alchemy. Um, hopefully, this video y'all learned something, you know, because I definitely did. Happened. This is so, so synchronous. This, this brought me so much clarity. Uh, a lot of clarity on the King of Wands. I mean, this nigga said King of Wands, King of Swords. That King of Wands, that's that, uh, that Sith energy. That Sith energy on that and that passion. Uh, but because I now have the sight, I see clearly what it is. Now I know what's next. What to what's next how to move but um until next time um whenever that is uh i catch on man y'all tap in uh live streams whenever man chaos being for a man we outside of time i'll see y'all next time at temple man see you.